role, roles of a father, roles of a coach, um, but just give him a chance to share a little bit from, from his heart. Um, uh, he loves to, um, many of you guys have heard him teach and have, have sat under him as a tutor during different treks. Um, so it's, it's a privilege to, to have Ben here. So let me um, open us with a word of prayer. Ben, I'll pray for you and then turn it over to you um, as we get going here. So let me pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Um, thank you for this opportunity just to, to gather as coaches, um, to, to hear um, from Ben, to hear what you have to say through Ben. Um, I pray, Lord, that you would bless the words that he's about to share with us, that they would be an encouragement to us, that they would be a challenge to us, um, that they would um, speak life and, and draw us into um, the, the men and women and the coaches that you've, you've called us to be, that you're inviting us to become. Uh, may this be another, another piece of that journey, another step in that process. So pray for him as he, as he teaches us tonight, as we listen to him and uh, get to engage with, with uh, what he'll share. Um, so uh, bless him, bless this evening. Lord, and I just pray for those who are still joining us, um, that you would sort out net network issues or password issues or these things, uh, that they might be able to join us quickly. And then pray this in your name. Amen. So welcome, Ben. Glad to have you here. And um, I'll turn it over to you. And um, yeah, we got a smaller group tonight, which is great. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome from Cape Town. Um, it seems like it's getting dark there already on your side. Uh, here by us, it's getting all lighter and lighter. So the sun starts going down here by 6.30 at night. Uh, we're an hour behind you, so it's now 4.11 here by us in Cape Town. But um, yeah, so great to be with you all. And uh, so excited to share with you something about the heart of a coach as, um, as a father figure, mother figure. Um, and I wanted to, <clears throat> I, I discussed with Ricky a bit on what, what to share. So I won't be doing the typical thing of looking at the four roles of a, of a coach as a father or mother figure that we typically talk about, but I want to jump into one of them very specifically. One of the pictures that we use when we do trick training is we say we want to take a nail, one nail or a couple of nails, and then we want to hit repeatedly on them, you know. So not a lot of nails to hit but just one or two or three to hit. And so today I'm just going to focus on one. I'm going to try and hit it over and over again, try and let it sink deeper into us. But I want to start off with a question. And I um, want you to think about this. Um, what would you say is one of the greatest gifts that you can give somebody as a coach? The answer can't be a ball. Uh, the answer can't be Jesus. Um, what do you think is one of the greatest gifts as a coach that you could give somebody else, a player, a fellow coach? What do you think? I, I suppose you would have thought about a lot of things, a lot of different things. Um, we might even have thought about love as an answer. Um, but what I want to say tonight is I think that one of the greatest gifts that we can give anybody, the greatest gift I can give my wife, the greatest gift I can give my children, one of the greatest gifts I can give them is, are you ready for it? Is to listen to them. To listen to them. Wow. If you had told me this before, I would have said, I didn't think that would be the greatest gift that I could give somebody, is the gift of listening to them. But I want to explain it a bit in terms of how, why I say that. One of the four roles that we say that a coach plays in the life of a player and the same that a father plays in the life of a son or a daughter 
sorry, is the, the role of establishing or creating emotional security. So emotional security. We talk about it on the field in terms of creating a safe space where the player feels safe being there. I'm safe, I can be myself, I can bring who I am, um, I, can, I can give what I've got. And one of the key elements in creating a safe space as a coach for a player or as a father for a son or a daughter, or as a husband, for a wife in my situation now, is the skill, the ability of learning to listen to them. Wow. So let's talk a bit about this. What does it mean to listen to somebody? Um, the big English word, and English is not my first language, so I... I, I like to use big words, then people think I'm fancy. No, it's just a joke. Um, but I, I like to understand big words. And so the big word is incarnational listening. Wow, that's a big word. It means to, to enter somebody's heart, to enter somebody else's uh, life when I listen to them. So I'm leaving me and I'm entering you as I'm listening to you. I want to connect with you in such a way that I almost come into your flesh to listen to you. That sounds very deep. <laughs> and it is. It is not something just superficial, just, you know, on the surface. It is really something that I've got to enter into. It's not just on the, on the, on the surface. We are very used to people listening to us on the surface. Let me give you an example. On Sunday, I decided to fix the roof. You can see my hand here with the cast. And I fell off the ladder. And I injured my hand. By God's grace, I didn't break my hand. It was very close. But I injured my wrist, my hand, and it was very, very painful. So now, obviously, I wear a cast. And everywhere I go, people ask me, what happened? Okay? Then I think, oh, they're going to listen to me. Then I tell them, I, fall, I fell off a ladder. Then one of two things happen. Either they burst out laughing and they can't stop laughing because the silly Muzungu fell off the ladder. Or they say to me, that's nothing. Let me tell you about what happened when I fell off the ladder. Or let me tell you about my cousin or my uncle or my grandfather or whatever that fell off a ladder. So there's no point where I feel listened to. Either someone laughing at me for my stupidness or someone hearing my story and then coming with a worse story Nowhere in this process do I feel that somebody stopped, looked me in the eye, and said, Wow, I hear you fell off a ladder. What happened inside of you when that happened? What did you think about? You know, so asking, for instance, good questions. That, that never happens. Stephen is very well trained in this. And you would hear when you, when you spend a lot of time with Stephen and you tell Stephen a sad story, uh, Stephen would always respond by saying, I'm sorry to hear that. Stephen, that's a well done. Uh, I love that. One of the things that I love of you a lot. It makes me feel that he listened to me that he connected with my heart and it's not just, okay, stupid man, you fell off the ladder. Let me tell you what, what happened when I fell off the ladder. So again, what, where did we start with? We started with saying one of the biggest, best gifts that we could give anybody, but we're talking about players now is if we could listen to them, 
Okay, are you with me? If we could listen to them. Now let me take you on a, on a trip into listening. I think the name Mother Teresa would be probably well known to you. Probably most people on planet Earth know who Mother Teresa was. She's already dead, but she was a Roman Catholic nun living and working in Calcutta in India. And she got the Nobel Prize for her work that she did. And she was an amazing woman of God. And she said this. She said, the greatest disease in the West, and she didn't know about Corona because she didn't live in Corona's time. But she said, the greatest disease in the West is not TB, tuberculosis, or HIV AIDS, or leprosy, or Corona. The biggest disease in the world is being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for. Wow. That hit me very deep when I heard that. The biggest disease in the world, the greatest disease in the world is being unwanted, unloved, and uncared for. Thought, how true is that? Everyone is so wrapped up in their own world, in their own problems, in their own stuff, that it feels to me like nobody has the time or the energy to listen to anybody else. Now, as coaches, we want to enter the space of a player. We want to, because we know we've got a, we are father figures, mother figures, um, uh, impactors in the life of a player. We want to play the role of someone creating emotional security by creating a safe space. One of the best ways of creating a safe space for anybody, but now specifically for our players, is to create for them the experience of being listened to, being wanted, loved, and cared the exact opposite of what Mother Teresa said, that we need so much. So we go to our greatest coach, our greatest example, which is Jesus, obviously. And, um, and, and we, 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 we see Jesus working and living in his life. And, and this is one of the key things that we saw Jesus doing every time. Almost every person that Jesus met left the meeting feeling heard, feeling somebody entered my story, stood there, didn't judge, listened to me, and I left it feeling wanted, cared for, and loved. Let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, one of the first people that Jesus encounters when he starts his ministry is the prostitute that is full of evil spirits. Um, and he, he meets her, he sees her, he listens to her in that sense. He, 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 he exercises the demons from out of her and she becomes his first disciple, his first follower. To right to the end of his ministry, that is the case. If we look at the, at the disciples, one of the key examples is, for instance, Matthew. Matthew was hated by everybody, despised by everybody. He probably was one of the most unwanted, unloved individuals in his time because of the work that he did. He, he collected the taxes. Everybody hated him. Jesus walked past him, stopped, turned around, looked at him, looked through him in that sense of listening to him. He stopped, he had time for him, and Matthew's life was never the same again. The example of the woman at the well in, um, is it John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman at the well, where Jesus had no business talking to her. He, he broke cultural and and uh, spiritual, biblical rules to talk to her. And in the end, she went away feeling listened to. Somebody saw me for who I am. 
Wow. So, this is what Jesus did. Someone wrote about this. I'm not going to tell you the name because that's not important, but somebody wrote about this and they said, what Jesus did is Jesus was able, when he met people, to give them the experience. So, if Jesus was here today and I would meet Jesus, I would walk away feeling I matter to him. I matter to him. I would hear or sense or feel the words in my heart that Jesus says, it's not just that you exist. It is good that you exist. How wonderful that you are. We come from a lot of scenarios. Some of us come from abused backgrounds. Some of us come from neglected backgrounds. Some of us come from very poor, very rich background. Some of us come without knowing who our father or mother is. Some of us come from knowing exactly who our father and mother is. Some of us want to meet our father and mother. Some of us want to forget our father and mother. We come from a vast variety of backgrounds. But to hear the words from somebody, imagine somebody looks you in the eye, listens to you, and, and says these words to you, it is good that you exist. How wonderful that you are. Wow. Who would not want that? Who would not want to hear that? Who would not want to feel that somebody spent, had spent time with me and left me with this as a gift? The gift of being listened to. So listening, obviously, beyond words. Listening to the person. Listening to the story. Listening to what my eyes see. Not just the words that the, the person says. Listening to the body language. Listening to all of these things. Um, we, see, um, we see these examples of, 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 of the people that, that, that Jesus met. And this is what happened. When Jesus met them, these people, Matthew, Nathaniel, the prostitute, Nicodemus, the blind man, the Samaritan woman, all of these examples. When, when Jesus saw them, he looked at them and he loved them and he listened. He was present. He was never in a rush. He had time for them. He was not distracted. He had no phone to distract him, but even if he had, he would have put the phone away. He was not distracted. He was present, never in a rush, never dis distracted. He gave people the dignity of listening to their stories. Now, me and Stephen form part of the African leadership team for ambassadors, and because of that, we meet weekly with the international leadership group. And about two weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, we had a meeting. And one of our other leaders in, in America, Matt, that I've met a lot of times, and Stephen has met a lot of times, you know, we know him. We think we know him. He started, we had an exercise where we had to tell each other our stories. And as I listened to him telling him his story, I felt so ashamed that I had, had known him so long, yet I never listened to his story. I mean, I know Emily, I know Mary, I know Stephen, I know some of the others of you here on the call. But have I spent time listening to your story? Not distracted, not in a rush that I've got to get somewhere else in five minutes' time. I've got to leave. Yo. Isn't it one of the sad things of our time that we don't have time for other people? We don't have time for the stories. We don't have time to immerse ourselves in their lives. Now, as a coach, something of this is needed for my players. I have to find the time to sit and to listen to the stories and to listen beyond the words, to listen to the body language, to listen to what my eyes see, to listen to them that they feel wanted, cared for, and loved. 
This is what love means. Imagine, imagine. Someone could say of the coaches in Kenya, imagine someone could say of the coaches in Kenya, those coaches are fantastic listeners. I've never known a group of people who are so genuinely interested in my world, who ask such good questions and who is so attentive. Imagine that is you that they are talking about. Where someone says of you, your player says of you, wow, this coach at this club is, is something I've never met anywhere else. I, I feel so I feel so listened to when I when I come out of a session. Yes, he's busy with with some things and you know he's got to teach me some skills and we're gonna talk game plan and we're gonna talk about the opponents. But I feel listened to which means I feel loved, which means I feel safe, which means I feel that I can be myself. Does that make sense? Now, ladies and gents, this is a problem. Why? Because we, we have no place where we feel like this. Isn't that true? I, I would almost guarantee you that there's no place in your life where you feel listened to, where you feel that your spouse, your loved one, your parents, your, your family are focusing on you in this way and looking at you in this way. And, and that's sad. It's also sad because I am very seldom this for other people. But let's be honest. Because we are most of the time distracted in a hurry, busy with other things, busy with three things at once. So it's very difficult to listen to others in this way. Okay, so time for us to get practical and to talk a bit about, okay, so, so how do we do this? So, so a key word that I think that I want us to talk about also when we go into our rooms, uh, when we go into our small group, smaller groups is, I want you to talk about two things. Number one is, what would, what would happen in your heart when you ex feel or experience that you are listened to, that you are heard? Okay. And then the second question, what makes it difficult for you to do that? What is what is makes it for you difficult to do this with somebody else? I've already told you a lot of things that make it difficult just in general. But 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 so so practically, yes, one of the key things is attention. The, 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 the difference between attentive listening, attentive listening versus the normal listening. What does the normal listening look like? Again, I'm in a rush. I, I ask you, how are you? But I don't have time to listen to, your, to what you say. That's typical, am I right? You walk past someone, you sit in the taxi, you see someone on the street, you ask, how are you? But you, you don't really want to hear because you don't have time to listen. You're just sort of saying it, you know, to not be rude. But what if you, 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 you say to somebody, how, or how, how are you? And your eyes go to that person fully. Your phone is put away. Your body language is not closed, but open. And you are relaxed. You are a true African operating on African time, I've got nowhere to go and I've got all day, you know, to get there type of thing. It is so difficult, isn't it? It's so difficult to be attentive while listening. If you go into any restaurant, if you go into any coffee shop in Kenya, where families are gathering, if you go into church in Kenya, not that we can go into church probably yet, uh, in South Africa, from this Sunday, we're going to start getting back into churches again.
But if you go into any of those meetings, you'll see a lot of people sitting together, but no one really paying attention to anyone else. Because one of the greatest things that block us from paying attention is this. I've always got to have it with me. When it goes ping, I've got to immediately check what's going on there because I'm afraid I'm going to miss out if I, if I, don't, if I don't respond immediately. And I feel people are going to be upset if I don't respond on their WhatsApp in 2.3 seconds. Um, I'm guilty as charged. This is me. I'm, I'm guilty. I, I struggle with that. Um, so attentive listening. What does it mean to be attentive? It means the following. To look to see, to listen, to give attention. Think about that. To look at someone, to see them, to listen, to give attention. What would it look like if every time you spoke to a player, and I'm not just talking about the time that you were on the field, I'm talking about the time before the practice, and I'm talking about the time also after the practice. What would it look like if you could pay attention. If you could cut out two things, they would be distractions and inattention. What, what do we need to do to cut out those two things so that we can be present, we can not be distracted, and we cannot be inattentive? Okay? Because, why, why do we want to do this? Not because Ben says so. That's definitely not. Why do we want to do this? Because this is one of the biggest gifts we can give another human being. It's giving them the sense, the experience of being valued. Because I'm caring for you. I'm loving you. I'm aware of you. Um, uh, the the the, suit, uh, the the Zulu word for greeting in South Africa is saubona. Saubona. The Zulu word. It's got an amazing meaning. It means literally, I see you. Think about that. I could look at my players and I could say to them, saubona. Not just as a greeting, but as a, I see you. I, I, I see through you. I, I listen to you. I give you my attention, which means that I cut out distractions and I cut out, um, I, I'm, 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 I'm focusing on you. I'm aware of you. Okay, so two questions for our groups. As coaches, as husbands, as, 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 as wives, as mothers, as fathers, as human beings, as friends, as brothers and sisters to other people. Where have we felt listened to like this and what would it do for our heart if this could happen? Secondly, what makes it difficult for you to, to listen like this? And what do you do? What, what are you going to do about it? Every time Jesus exited people's lives, they felt, wow, something just happened because someone saw me for who I was because they gave me their time and attention. I feel worthy. I feel cared for. I feel safe. I feel loved. Remember 1 Corinthians 13 that says, you can have all the things in the world that people desire, everything, name it, all the fancy stuff, all the great stuff, you can have all of that spiritually, all the things that you could desire to have spiritually, you could have all of that. But if you don't love, you are making a noise and you are annoying and you are loud in someone's ears, you are a clanging symbol, making a lot of noise and it's very irritating. Love means to be able to listen well. 
and we're focusing it today on our players and on creating a safe space for them to be themselves. Okay. Uh, Emily, the answer is no to your question, uh, if that helps you. Um, okay, good. I hope you could hear. I hope it made sense. Uh, let's discuss this. Let's talk about this. And uh, we'll come back at the end and we will, um, we will wrap it up. Is that okay? So maybe just to wrap it up, um, we are talking about how to create a safe space as a coach um, for a player. And we were saying that we do that by giving them one of the biggest gifts we can give somebody, and that is listening to them, entering their world, entering their space, and really listening to them. And I just want to read you this. Um, to listen like this is to enter another person's world at a heart level with empathy, with the empathy of Jesus. Um, this is how we demonstrate our love for them. We truly listen to what they say and feel what they feel. And in doing so, by God's grace, we give people a little bit of a taste of heaven on earth. Isn't that amazing? I can Amen. give players a taste of heaven on earth by entering their world and listening to them, um, feeling with them, listening to them, creating this safe space. So I hope this has been helpful for you. It is very challenging because we really don't listen. I struggle with this. I desire to do it, but most days Jesus shows me again that, oh, I didn't listen uh, because I was distracted or because I was um, non-attentive or because I just had no time. Um, what a way to love my wife, my children, my colleagues, my staff, my friends, my players, my coaches, by listening to their stories. So maybe a good positive way to end this is to give ourselves a challenge. Why don't we tonight or tomorrow make the time and go to someone and just ask them, please share with me your story. Share with me your story and just sit in that. Sit in that story. Listen to that story. Don't counter with a worse story or a better story. Just sit in that. And may we all grow to be like Stephen one day to say, to be able to say, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> when someone shares with you their story or their or their heartache. So that's it from me, Stephen, Emily, uh, Mary, thank you for the time to spend with you guys. I hope this was useful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, I just want to open up to the group and just, uh, yeah, anything that, that you guys heard or you would want to share just in response. Um, just a, a, a couple of responses here if anyone wants to um, say something. Otherwise, I can wrap up and, and close this here. But yeah, anything from the breakout rooms? Okay, thank you so much, Ben. Thank you, guys, for the availability. This is also a lesson. And... Uh, being good listeners in the in the call. Yeah, that's what we've learned today. And you're not in the wrong uh, in the wrong call. 
in the Zoom meeting, you're not in the wrong place. Just know that uh, you're in the right place at the right time. Because uh, for us learning this, it will create something good in us. Uh, like for me, I, my phone has been a very destructive uh, thing to me. Yeah, thank you, Ben. I've, I've taken that home. But I'll finish up all my businesses with the phone before listening to someone or giving my time to someone. Asante. Thanks, Mary. Someone else, anyone else want to share something? Hi. Yeah, go ahead, Anne. Okay, I'm highly humbled today for the meeting with Ben. I think um, listening is a skill in counseling. By the choir, we should take that as a skill, listening as a skill. So we should observe the, um, the body posture, the um, high to high conduct with the person who is talking. You should put aside the phone and everything, coach, so that at least you can get what the player. Because sometimes when you are uh, having your phone and you are listening to another person, that person sees that you are you are you don't care or you are not getting what you say. So I think today we are humbled, yes, and we are going to put it in practice when we go back to our field immediately after the corona is over. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Dennis, do you want to say something? I uh, just want to say thank you to Ben for this session. Um, it's a good reminder to, to all of us. Uh, we struggle a lot with the proper attentive listening. Uh, even in our breakout room, most of us are saying the phone, social media, a lot of life's pressures, uh, the stuff we are going through uh, limits us from being good and attentive listeners. Uh, but thank you for the reminders, for the pointers we've learned. Uh, we are looking forward to the challenge to learn how to become better listeners and be able to develop trust with our players and also in the other relationships we're in. So thank you, Ben. Thanks, Anna. Asante. Anyone else? Yes. Well, let, let me um, wrap well, up let, with. Let uh, me um, wrap up with. Uh, Emily, are you able to? Um, Emily, are you able to? Um, mute? All right. All right. <laughs> um, I'll just hear myself twice. It's great. I'll just hear myself twice. It's great. Uh, I, in our group, uh, one of the things that group, came up. One of the things that came up was the was um, the um, challenge of there's so many players. There's so many players. The how do we listen when the there's so many people? How do we listen when there's so many people? And Caleb gave a great example of something he does on his field. Uh, he said that at the end of a uh, session. He said that at the end of a session. He would allow, he one, would or two players allow one or two players <coughs> to just tell their story. And as, as he did that, um, he, he created a, a safe place. And Ben's done this at Trek with us, where someone tells their story. And afterwards, you just you know, put, put an arm on, on their, their shoulders and say, we accept your story. Um, and he said that if there's something that was there that really um, that he observed that needed some deeper engagement or maybe some follow-up that he'd be able to follow up and he'd be able to talk to that player about about things that are going on i thought that was beautiful i thought that was a great example um i know one thing we've tried to do within our kind of staff culture so with our ambassadors team is to just every once in a while break out into twos and threes 
Um, sometimes it's Zoom breakout rooms or in our office, just sit down with a person and just be like, tell me your story. What, what Ben was saying, the, the, the challenge of please share your story with me. Um, I'd love to hear it. And we just, we sit and we listen and we, and, and starting what, what that's doing and what I, what I think, um, what I want to keep challenging us with is, is, as Anne said, it's a skill to be able to listen. So how are we teaching our players to also become good listeners? Um, we say this a lot. We teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. So we model it, uh, but we also break down the skill and we actually um, can teach guys how to listen. Um, and we, we give experiences. We, we give opportunities for people to practice listening. Um, so uh, I just want to, I, I thought that was a great thought. Um, something else that just kind of came to my mind is, uh, again, you know, do you have routines with your phone? Um, are there certain times that you switch off your phone? Uh, my, my family has been challenged in this um, at various times. Right, right now I got to be listening to my, my four-year-old. Magazines and wet meals. Sorry, guys. Parenting moment is happening right now. Um, no, you um, um, so I just I want I want to challenge us with that um, of of uh, being intentional. We don't we don't change these habits without some kind of structure or routine. Um, so just just want to encourage you guys with that. Um, those are some things that we've done. Um, <laughs> Excuse me for one second, guys. <laughs> All right, okay. I'll continue with you. So, so what Stephen is, is, is pointing out is the, the importance of, of creating habits where, for instance, I've written down on my habit, I've got a sheet that's what are my habits? You know, I want to sit in God's word. Okay, how many days a week do I want to do that? Can't say every day because every day is not realistic. So what are my phone habits? I want to have phone-free evenings. So that means I've, I've got to put the phone in another room because if the phone is in the same room with me, then I'm, I'm still watching, I'm still listening, I'm still drawn to it. And then one of my other habits is I want to have phone-free weekends. So that means on, on the, especially the day that I want to sort of slow down and quiet down and, and rest and delight and enjoy God and my family and life. And, I want to be able to put the phone away or off or away. And another very practical thing that I've started only in the last month is because even in my quiet time, I'm distracted with the phone because my emails come in, it's WhatsApps that come in. WhatsApp is the biggest thing. It con consistently and continuously come in. So what do, do I do? I, the, my phone is with me because I, I'm, I'm using it either as a Bible or I'm using it as a, you know, other, some other type of thing. So what I do is I put the phone on, on airplane mode. My, my, your phone maybe also have a function like that. My phone has a function like that. So I put it on airplane mode. So I can still use it to read the Bible on it, but the Wi-Fi is cut off. The network is cut off. I, you know, no messages coming in. And it's so difficult in the beginning because you feel you're going to miss out. You feel you're going to get that important message that you, you know, you're not going to respond to. But we have to understand that time with God is priority. Like time with my wife is priority. Like time with my daughter or my son. Time with my player is priority. So these very practical tips really helps us to, to help us to listen. Remember, there's no, the, 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 the answer is not in trying to listen. You will go and try tonight. You will fail. I promise you that. And you will feel miserable and bad about yourself. So the, the thing is not trying to listen. The thing is, let's train ourselves to listen. We understand training because we're coaches. You don't kick a ball like Ronaldo on the first day. No one does. You don't try to, you know, bend it like Beckham or to dribble like Ronaldo. Who can do that? No, you don't try to do that because you fail. So what do you do? You train. So you, you start by small things. So can you do one thing? So one thing that you can do. What is one thing that you could do tonight or tomorrow 
to help train you to listen to others. And that's a very practical thing that you could think about. Um, um, one, one very practical thing that I will, tip that I will also give is, you know, especially for us as Christians, when people start speaking to us, we want to give them advice. We want to solve their problems. That's one thing that you can stop immediately. When someone is sharing a story with you, except if they are saying, Ben, I need your advice. Tell me what to do. Then, even then you should be careful. But stop giving advice. Stop trying to solve their problems. Listen and respond with, with words like, wow, sure. And then, yo, how did you feel? And then, listen. Activate listening instead of giving answers or, you know, solving problems with solutions. And as a parent, those of you that are parents, you know how difficult this is because your child comes to you. You just want to get them away. So you just solve the problem and there they go instead of listening. And so that's, a, that's very practical things. But remember the benefit. When we do these little things, the benefit are that other people get a taste of heaven. Other people feel that their hearts become open to you. Okay, so there's such a lot of benefits. They feel loved. I don't, do you ask me, show me how to love. It's not, that's, that's not love. How do, how do I show love? It's by, wow. Really? And then? Wow. And then? It's, <laughs> it makes sense. But the, the key is not, it's such an important life thing that we've got to do and we've got to teach our players to do, as Stephen said. It's not, we're not, we're not trying to try. Trying never works. We're training. So break it down. What is one thing that you could do today? And if you do that for four days, okay, what's another thing that you could do? Now you're training yourself to listen. We all know in training, um, there's days that you go backwards, okay, but then there's days that you go forward again. So activate the mindset of training. I'm training myself to listen. I'm training myself to put the phone away. Don't put the phone away for a week. You're going to get withdrawal symptoms. You're going to die. I promise you, when that phone is away from you for a week, you're going to die. Don't do that. It's, it's a dangerous thing. Can you put it away for one hour? Or maybe that's even too scary. Can you put it away for 10 minutes? Maybe that's a good point to start with, training. Okay, if you can put it away for 10 minutes, what about 20 minutes the next week? What about 30 minutes the next week? It makes sense. So as we work through this, we teach our players also that this is how life works. You don't take a big jump. You train things. You train to study. You train to do this. You train football. We train to listen to each other. We train to love each other in a proper way. So, no, sorry. I've got a lot to say, so I can go on. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks, Ben, and thanks for... Uh allowing me to model a shooing away of a four-year-old <laughs> trying to try to listen well when there are uh, distractions. Um, hey, uh, thanks for joining with us tonight. Um, I hope you guys have been encouraged by this and, and you're, you're taking something with you as, as you leave. Um, and I know I am. Uh, one of the things I always want to remind us of as we take part in the Coaches Fellowship is that um, hey, we're on a journey as ambassadors. We, we believe in you guys as coaches. Uh, we believe in the impact that um, you guys have in the communities around you. Um, we we want to support that. We want to encourage that. We want to see you guys flourish and uh, really just um, see God work in you and through you. Uh, so uh, that's why we do these calls. Um, we, we always kind of are centered around these three ideas of football, faith, and future. Um, so listening will make you a better football coach. 
I guarantee it. And Caleb was saying, uh, when, someone from our group, maybe Caleb was saying, when you really listen well, players perform better. I would agree with that. So this, is, this helps you as a, as, as a football coach. Um, I think as we hear people's stories, we also are, are tapping into where we see God at work. And we actually are, are hearing, are seeing the fingerprints of, of, of God in the midst of people's lives. And, and I've, I know I've learned, I've been humbled by this, of, of um, the more that I can hear someone's story, the more I'm actually learning about who God is and his nature and his character. Um, so I think we deepen our faith as we do this. Um, when we think about future, we're, we're thinking about, you know, a, um, someone growing in their future. I think of a, a player growing in different ways, um, growing into who, who God's created them to be, growing into a bright future. Um, and I think when we are able to hear and listen and know these, know our players better, we are better equipped to actually lead them into um, the future that God's kind of got planned for them. Um, and that's, that's part of our role. So um, thank you, Ben, you're, you're spot on uh, with, with this and um, really encouraged by uh, our time tonight. So let me close this with a quick word of prayer. And then um, if you want to stick around for a couple minutes, you can uh, and say hi to some people um, if you need to go and uh, parent or take, uh, you know, hang out with a four-year-old like, like I do, uh, then <laughs> you're, you're excused. But let me, let me pray for us and um, we'll go on our way. Lord, what, what, a, what a gift um, to be able to sit and to um, hear, hear Ben share a journey that I know he's on, that you are on with him, um, and get to just kind of, he opens up his heart and shares this with us, and, and we get to, to learn and to sit in it, and sit in it in community. Um, so it's not just uh, learning for my own sake, but it's learning with others that I get to be challenged and, and grow with others. What, what a gift. Um, that community is, what a gift uh, the, the work of your spirit and others is that I get to just hear and listen into. Um, Lord, I pray that we would become better listeners. And I pray that that would start with us really being able to listen to you well. Um, that as we, as we sit in your word, as we, as we read your Bible, as we are going to church, as we're singing songs, as we're, we're just being still that we would learn to hear your voice, uh, that we would know your voice um, amidst all the noise of things around us, that we would really learn to listen, to slow down, to hear your voice. Um, and that, that would change us. Uh, that would, that would that as we listen to you, that actually helps us be better listeners to others. Um, so Lord, yeah, help, help us uh, from, from here, the things that you want us to, to carry, the things that you want us to, to do, um, today, I, I just, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Um, so the thing that we are thinking of, uh, God, help us to, to do it tonight and tomorrow. Um, and may we see fruit in that. May we see just the gift that this really is. Um, and, and Lord, may we know that this is a journey um, that, and that you are faithful to walk with us, um, that you are faithful to send your spirit to be with us in the journey. Um, so we're just, we, we know we're not alone in it. So I bless, uh, just pray a blessing on all these coaches. Um, Lord, I know many of them carry heavy burdens. I pray that you would hear them, uh, hear their burdens, that you would come alongside them, that you would meet needs, uh, that you would um, comfort them uh, just as, as they continue to, to long and strive to just be, be father figures and good mothers and, and, uh, in the community and their families. Uh, so I just pray a blessing on each of them. Lord, thanks for this time tonight. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. What'd you say, Deno? N-E-T. N-E-T. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I, I haven't found Zoom Chai yet. I haven't seen that, that app. Um, <laughs> I've got a deep desire for a big cup of Kenyan chai. So, yeah, if you can, if you can, I'll do say it. Well, we'll work on it. Well, hey guys, if you want to stick around, feel free. You can unmute yourself, say hi to someone. Um, I've got to head out uh, and hang out with my little.